I want to clarify something about the titanium. The titanium. Yes, if you don't mind, well, we got a minute or, or yeah. we're running out of time. We're running no, out of no, tape, no. are you? No. We've got <laughs> enough gigawatts there then. Good, okay. What's his name found at Titanic? Uh, uh, Ballard, Robert Ballard. Robert, Robert Ballard. There you go. Yep. That's it, that's it. He was looking for sponsors to go down so we could look for the, for the, for the Titanic. Well, the Navy got a hold of him and said, look, We'll do this, but and, and this came out. This was declassified in like nineteen. I'm sorry, 20, 2018. He gave an interview to CNN. The Navy hired him to Robert look for two two miss, Robert Ballard. Yes, yeah, two missing nuclear submarines. One of the USS Thresher, which I'm very familiar with. The other was the Scorpion. They had a rough idea where they were, but they weren't positive. The trouble with the Scorpion was that it's, it's got nuclear weapons aboard it, and they were worried that the nuclear power plant was leaking radiation into the ocean. See, so they hired him to go down and document and, and with the instruments and stuff to see if there was leakage and stuff. Top secret stuff, they couldn't just do the Navy because then the Russians would know where, they, where these nuclear weapons were, they didn't want that. So under the guise of finding the Titanic, they said, if you find those when you've got any time left, you can go look for the Titanic. But when he found them all and did everything for the Navy, he had 12 days left. And on the 12th day, he found it. Okay, now here's what I find most interesting. He didn't elaborate, and by the way, he says he's still doing top secret Navy stuff for the Navy, classified stuff, most interesting. But you got the Titanic, and not too far, I'm not talking about a mile, probably, I don't know how many miles away, but it ain't like a thousand miles away, within, not too far away from the Titanic, you got two, not one, but two sunken United States nuclear submarines. Just this last summer, the Titan went down to the Titanic, and it turned out missing. You know, the, the one where you pay money to go down to the Titanic, the sub that, that little submarine yeah. that turned up missing. Remember they that last summer? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I find that strange. That's all. I, I don't have any proof of anything. Uh, little submarines can go down there. Now, obviously, not a big Los Angeles class submarine ain't going down. It's too deep that, that we know if you can't go there. But hey, when the USSR dissolved, they did they did an inventory of all the nuclear weapons. There was a bunch of suitcase nukes that were missing. You know little thermonuclear device that fits in the size of a suitcase, you know. Could you put that in a small submarine like that, that like the Titan and uh, do something with it? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. But he's still, Robert Ballard is still doing classified stuff for the Navy. But I found it most interesting that he could look for the Titanic. It was a cover story when he's really looking for the nuclear submarines for the U.S. Navy. That was top secret for years. When did he find the Titanic? What year was that? 80, in the 80s there was it? Come to find out, you know, that he, he lucked out and found the Titanic, you know. That was the most interesting thing. So what's going on? Why are, why are all these strange happenings happening down there by where the Titanic's at? I don't know. Why are you not allowed to even go anywhere near the Edmund Fitzgerald? I don't know. But, you know, the Maritime Academy up in Traverse City, they just lost a, a, a graduate up there, what, was it last year, two years ago? I forget what boat he was on. He was doing something with uh, bringing the anchor up and something snapped and hit him in the head. He'd only been out of the academy not too long. Second mate, second mate. These are dangerous jobs. These, these lake freighters are dangerous places here. Some docks, you got to shift the boat ahead to load, you know, and they'd winch it, you know. You'd have to loosen them up. You're standing right there, and they're, they're winching. They're, that cable is just singing. Yeah. I mean, it's just making the weirdest noise. Boy, if that lets go, you're going to be cut in half right now. You know? When you got in a rough sea with a 150 foot tug and a you know barge that was a football field long full of number six oil or diesel oil or something gasoline you know you get in rough seas you'd have to break away from the barge because you'd snap them facing cables uh, if you didn't you'd break away from the barge and you'd have to back up to that barge with the tug take the stern of the tug in rough seas and back up to that barge you know and you got the rough seas and the tugs crashing down next to the barge Someone oh, had to position a wooden ladder, and I mean a long, long wooden ladder. You had one deck hand on the stern. That was usually my partner, John. He was a big old burly, bearded Harley Davidson dude, strong, you know. He would position the ladder and hold it tight, and I would be the guy, the 130-pound winkling, that would skimper <laughs> up that ladder 25 feet into the air and get on that barge in the middle of the winter. He'd throw me up a line or a rope, and I'd have to pull up that three inch you know diameter cable and put it around a button on the barge and then hurry up and s get back down that ladder back onto the tug 
but this is all the while in a 15, 20 foot sea when the tug and barge are going up and down and you're holding the la and you got a human scurrying up that thing. Are you kidding me? Sometimes it was like adventure and boredom, you know, separated by moments of terror for me. It, it, uh, Isn't life to be enjoyed? Isn't life to be experiencing new things all the time, you know? I mean, uh, I, I could not, I had a buddy that tried to get me to be an insurance salesman. And I went to several of their meetings and I sat there and I thought, Boring. I just, <laughs> this, this is not me. I, That's I, not I, adventure. I couldn't do this. I'm just saying some people, they follow what their parents did or, you know, or, or the safety of that. I've had a lot of jobs that were very dangerous. You know, I was at the railroad for 16 years, freight train conductor, you know. And because I'd get laid off for two months, I'd jump on a ship and, and, go, and, and work there instead of take. Back in them days, you got six weeks unemployment and that's it, pal. You had to go find a job, you know. Now people are on unemployment for how long, you know. But uh, sailing, boy, I'll tell you, once I got out of that engine room and shoveling coal out of my deck, that navigation, now we got something now, buddy. I like that. I like that a lot. I know. We were in 20 below real temperature weather out there in the middle of the lake. The waves that would crash upon the bow of the tug would freeze instantly. And we had to pound the ice off constantly. Mm -hmm. You know, sledges and axes. All the while, you, as the human popsicle, are getting sprayed. I can remember shipkeeping at the Torco Doctor in Toledo, and I'm hearing this god awful noise, and the ship's moving around. We're tied up, you know. I went to Earth, and I go out on deck, and here's this big—I don't know what ship it was, but it was frozen solid. And he'd go ahead about five feet and break the ice. He'd back up, go ahead and break another five feet of ice just to get in there to discharge his cargo. And I remember it was, it was it was right by Christmas Eve because uh, they laid the boat up early. I always remember that sound of that ice breaking of that lake freighter. It sounds like it's coming through the hull. And I'm telling you, back then, that ice was a foot thick. You back it up, ram it. Back it up, ram it. So you back it up and you get uh, some steam under you and you get that tug going full speed, which is about 15, 16 mile an hour, and land against a two foot thick wall of ice. And man, you, you, I mean, you got to be hanging on to something. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. talk about rattling your chains. Yeah, you, you reminded me when we took the trip on the Badger. You know, they laid the Badger up early this year. There was, uh, I think they, they hit the, the dockers. The ferry boat Badger? The, the, yeah, the one that goes from Ludington to Manitowoc there. Across Lake Michigan, Railroad yeah. car ferry. Yeah, seen it many times. I'm telling people, yeah, if you want to experience this, get on that boat. And if you really want to experience wait till it's rough out there. And then you talk about hanging on. You better hang on, buddy. If you want to experience this, life is to be experienced. You know, you said you want to get up to Lake Superior and check that all out. Yeah, you walk that. Walk walk out on the beach there. Oh, I'm gone. From the white, from the museum there, you can walk for miles out there if you want. I, I have already convinced myself that I am going to make, I'm thinking sometime in September. Maybe. I'm not sure, but I'm going up to Whitefish Point. I've never been there. It's an amazing industry. It's a dangerous industry. Well-paid industry and the benefits, you know. That's part of the magic of working on the Great Lakes is the ports you visit. Like, and that's or some of my best memories going into Frankfort, Michigan, way up there in Ludington and Alpena mm -hmm. and Traverse City and Sheboygan. Marquette's I mean, a good one. Mark, and these are beautiful little ports. You know, I want to go relive that. I don't know if I, you can't relive it, but I want to go see them again, you know, because there, there was a lot of magic up there. Be beautiful ports. Did you get seasick, by the way? I did. The only reason I didn't is because I've always had bad hearing. I was good enough to get in the Air Force, but but because of the radar I worked on, you know, uh, ship's radar, our radar was six million watts, and it just killed the killed the earth. You didn't get seasick, though, or too bad? Well, no, I didn't, hardly ever. Now, when we took the Arowana Queen around there, I put uh, cotton balls. See, people that have good hearing get seasick easy because it's, it's a disturbance of the middle ear. I have good hearing. Okay, but if you put cotton balls in your ears, and I use the AccuBand, that little Y, it's an acupressure point, mm -hmm. and, and I did not get seasick on that trip. Everybody else in that boat, I and mean, I got queasy, there's no question, and it took 10 years before I could even look macaroni and cheese in the face again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say for about the first couple of years working the tugs, I was seasick a lot, and that was terrible, <laughs> living that way. But I eventually did begin to overcome it and get over yeah. it. But it took a while to get there. That's why they say, you know, walking around like a drunken sailor. Well, it's not that they're drunk, but your equilibrium, uh -uh. you know, and you get on dry land and you're, you know, you look like you're drunk. <laughs> no, I'm good. It's I'm one good thing to be on a small boat and have that happen, but when you got one of two football fields long doing this, 
I mean, this is uh, awesome to see something like that going on. Yeah. And especially when you got it. <clears throat> that's why I recommend the Badger. People at home have got to understand. Once in your life, people should take that trip. They really should. I mean, it was big enough to haul railroad cars and semi trucks. That's how big this thing is. And still to get tossed around like a cork. Oh, buddy, that's Lake Michigan. Um, you know, I just listened. When all them years I worked, I had to shave every day. You know, yeah. I got a haircut once a week. And I told my wife when I retired, I said, that's it. That's I, it. I, I understand. Take a break. I'm going to take a break. Uh, it'll be a cold day in hell Well, when you see me in a suit, coat, and tie again, too. Yeah. Anything left or anything more you want to add about 1913? I can only pray that, uh, and once again, I'm going to allude to just last week, that had they not changed things around, you know, a lot of ships could have sank last week because that was bad news out there. And that wind and snow is hitting. I'm thinking, I can't imagine being on a, on a, on a ship out there because you got to take, when the ice, you, I think you told me you had to go out and take ball bats and such and to bust, the, ice bust the ice off there. So you wouldn't roll over. Well, imagine a thousand footer. Yeah. I mean, they got golf carts for these guys to work. I think most of it is uh, they're older people on there now because they're having trouble finding finding help. You mean nobody wants to go out and be a Great Lakes Mariner anymore? Or no, they all want to be YouTubers and TikTokers. <laughs> uh, Lord help us all. all I, I did I can the say, maritime man. thing, so I have every right to be a YouTuber. I well, think. Uh, or at least I'm trying to be. Well, okay, thanks for everything. We'll look forward to doing this again. I think we've got some options ahead. We've talked about them, possibly one on the cam loops. Um, Eastland. At, as per request from one of our viewers. Mm -hmm. the, what was that, the East? Eastland. Eastland that rolled over in the Chicago River. Yep, yep, yep. The, the boat that exploded, the Civil War veterans coming home from the war on, on the, somewhere <laughs> on the Mississippi or so many other options to the dive Empress in of Ireland. and discover. That was a big one. The what Emperor, one? Empress of Ireland on the St. Lawrence Seaway. I, I have not even ever heard of that till you just yeah, said it. So. Yeah, I, I've been right over her grave when we delivered the Arowana Queen. Okay. The pilot is the one that told us about it. He says, we're coming up on it. It's right here. So that's all these people died there. The spirits are one thing, man. You have a lot, big loss of life. There's spirituality involved there. I still say that. So Until we meet again. Amen, we will we'll, we'll do it again. Okay, sounds good. For sure. Enjoy the rest of your winter.